tracker and events. They've both been combined into the Capture app, and that is our big announcement for 41, is at this point, the Capture app now can do everything that the old Tracker Capture app did, plus more. And we really want to, yes. We're very excited about that. We're excited about that for a number of reasons. I mean, of course, there's the very boring maintainability side of it, but actually what it gives you all is the ability to have this app on continuous release. It's really important with individual data to stay on top of upgrades because that's also where you get uh, security fixes. That's where you're going to get new functionality, many highly requested things. And the Capture app being on continuous release allows us to continue to add that kind of functionality throughout the year and allow you to take advantage of it more quickly. Uh, we also did a lot of work behind the scenes uh, to harmonize the API to make it make a lot more sense. Uh, so there are quite a few changes to that that you really want to be familiar with if you're using the API for your apps or for some of your processes. Uh, we've got updated uh, guidance and documentation around this. I'm going to walk you through some of the things that are in the Capture app that aren't in the old Tracker Capture that are will hopefully motivate you to, to make the switch. But did want to point out very importantly that the, the Tracker old API endpoint is being retired. So it's bundled now in 41, but won't be in the next big release. So it really is a year of trying to make the switch, uh, switching over the, the way that you're using the API and taking advantage of those endpoints. Um, we're always very happy to be in close contact with you as you're going through this and you're finding anything that you have a challenge, we, we can provide some support and guidance. So again, I won't go into all of this text, but just want to say there's kind of some big areas within the Capture app that are significant new functionality that may motivate you to take advantage of the Capture app. Um, for example, the working list will take a, a look at scheduling so that now you can have your own uh, cadence of when you recommend the next scheduled event to be take place, giving you a lot more control over the layout and the look and also the ability to build your own widgets that can be embedded directly into the Capture app so that it gives you a lot more freedom to not have to create an entirely new app. You can rather create a widget that is embedded into the, this app and more uh, ability to look into the change log, see who has been manipulating what record and what changes were made, et cetera. So let's take a look at some of these. Um, yeah, just wanted to really make it sure that you're aware. It's on continuous release. Um, so you'll see from the dates here, I mean, we have just constant updates that are rolling out. Uh, many of them are not going to be any kind of significant or breaking change for you. They're going to be small updates. We are going to be having more information available with the release, the continuous release, so that you know what is actually in there and what you're going to get out of it, especially because we know that training users is really the most significant expense and challenge for upgrades. We, we want to make sure that the, the changes that we introduce aren't something that are going to really confuse anybody. Um, but it's also important to say that this app is back supported to 238, meaning that almost all of the functionality that you'll see is something that can still work even if you don't upgrade to 241. You can upgrade your Capture app. So it's something that we really hope gives you the motivation to make the switch over. So one of the things, again, that we've been talking a lot about is extensibility. You'll hear a bit more from Austin later in the session to talk about this, but wanted to show you kind of the simplicity of how this works. Uh, the, we have these plugin uh, points within the Capture app that allow you to, to make plugins, widgets, and embed them directly into the enrollment dashboard, into the data entry form. Uh, we have the, the documentation to show you how to do this, but I was going to show you one example of this that is also ended up being a cool feature. So we'll take a quick look at wherever this is. Nope. All right. I'm never good with the hotkeys. I think, yeah, this is a good place to be. Okay, so if you take a look in the App Hub, we, we actually use the new extension points ourselves to create something that people have requested for quite a while, which is the capture growth chart. Uh, based on the WHO Z scores for weight, height, uh, that can be embedded in your application when you have a program that it makes sense for, if you're doing growth monitoring, if you're doing nutrition, et cetera. And the configuration of this is very easy. You install it. 
And then in the data store management, you'll just be able to create a config file for it that tells it exactly where you want it to be, what you want it to look like. You can put it into the enrollment and you'll see that it's, it's very tiny. It's, it's just being able to plug in a plugin. Right? So it actually is, is very simple to do, and creating the plugins themselves is also much easier than creating a new application. So we really want to encourage new innovation in this area, and the Capture app has multiple points that you'll be able to take advantage of this. So just to give you a, a look at what this is like, I'm going to go into the Capture app, and we'll take a look at the Immunization Registry program. Uh, so if I go into an individual here, so we have embedded the growth chart here in the enrollment dashboard. So you can see all of the events that are a part of the immunization registry, where they are capturing some birth details, they're providing the immunizations over time, and they're doing some growth monitoring. And then it will be displayed here in the chart. You can switch between the charts based on the sex. You have the length, height for age, the weight for age, and these are all the parameters that are based on the, the WHO Z scores. Those can also be changed if your country has its own growth values that it wants to see mapped. Those are things that can be changed in that same application. You don't need to make your new widget. You can just do it based on the guidance that we have provided, which is fairly straightforward. And now that we're here, I wanted to show you a couple of other things uh, that are, are uh, new and in big improvements. So, for example, we've uh, decoupled the idea of transfer and referral. I know that you're probably very used to the, the kind of one-time transfer or permanent transfer dialogue. That doesn't really match the way that it's being used in the field and can end up being a bit confusing for both the user and also when it comes to analytics, figuring out where something occurred. So we have now just a, a dialogue for transfer completely. Uh, this is what is replacing that permanent transfer from before. Very straightforward that you would be able to say, for example, this patient, we want to move them uh, from the facility where we are to a different facility. You do the transfer and one significant change you'll see is that now the ownership has changed right here in the enrollment widget. And that ownership is now an analyzable value as well. So now you can start to break things out based on where something was initially started in the enrollment. You can see exactly where an event was performed, but you also have this concept of ownership to give proper attribution based on what kind of analytics that you want to run. So yes, that's a good one. All right, we can, we can see now how the referral works. It's a bit different. So what we've done is made a relationship that's a stage to stage relationship. I can show you what that looks like, but I wanted to show you just really quickly how it appears for the user. So I'm just gonna say I've, I've done a birth uh, notification here. I'm gonna complete, oh, we have an error. Never mind. I'm gonna show you that in a slide. I promise it works. I've surely just signed in with the wrong user or something. Yeah, here we go. This is what you would see if I didn't do it wrong. Um, this is the transfer, then the referral. You'd get this widget just at the bottom of that because you've related these stages. It knows that one of the things you might want to do is this action as a referral. And so you would just click on the schedule, it's going to pull it up, you can pick what the date is, uh, and you can decide where it's going to go. And that's replacing the old one-time transfer from Tracker Capture. And it's going to schedule an event in that other site, and is going to have the information for them of the referral reason, uh, why it's being sent, and then they have the option to interact with that referral and say, this person never arrived, they didn't show up, or to decline it, say, we don't offer those services, we've referred it to another location. So there's a lot more behind the scenes of how these referrals are going to work. All right, I'm going to go back and see if I can not screw up the next thing. So, for example, I'm going to back out of uh, this person. Let's say we have a, a relationship. 
Okay, this is an off requested feature. We now have inheritable attributes, and what that means for you is that the attributes that you have already entered for this tracked entity, their first name, their last name, their location, their phone number, all of these things can be marked as inheritable so that when you go to do something like, for example, you're going to add them, you're, you suspect this child in the immunization program has an adverse event, so you want to be able to create this relationship, and you'll pull it up and automatically it will pre-populate because of these attributes are inheritable. So you save a lot of time with your data entry. You don't have to do this twice. And it carries over when you create that new uh, relationship or the new tracked entity. Um, you'll see here just briefly the custom icons are appearing. So this is uh, not one of the standard DHS2 icons, but a custom icon. And I'm going to back out of this now, and I'm going to show you a bit of the working lists. Okay, the working lists here are really meant to be for the person that is actively doing data entry or data capture. They're the ones that are actively seeing clients and are working with this. This is meant to support their workflows. So you know that there's already uh, some pre-configured ways to look at their list if they want to see their scheduled appointments uh, for today, etc. But we've made it much easier to create and share your own view. So for example, I'm going to do a working list that's based on a specific stage. I'm going to say in the immunization stage. And what I'd like to see is all of the children that are not registered in the national CRVS system, which is one of the questions that was in that stage. And I'm just going to create my own working list, update it, and I'll get the full list of those that were either not registered or it's unknown if they're registered. And I can just save this view and share it. So CRVS needed. Okay, it is now available as a working list for me going forward. I don't need to keep recreating this as this becomes part of my workflow. And I also have the option to share that with different users or different user groups. So it should make it really easy for them to be able to fine tune the kind of list that they work from if they're doing outreach or something. Um, it allows you also to pull up anything that's been assigned to you as a user. So you can quickly be able to see, I'm going to clear out some of these because nothing from immunization was there, but I am assigned this user uh, or this tracked entity as follow-up um, and it allows me to, to make the most of, of the, the actions I actually need to take as a user of the system. Uh, I also have the ability to download that data. And so this is, for example, many times they're doing outreach. They want to be able to create a list of those children that they would want to follow up with. They know that while they're doing outreach, they're not going to have connectivity. They also perhaps aren't using Android, so they don't have offline, but they could still download it as a CSV file. They can open it up in Excel and still have their list available to them. All right, I'm going to go to just another couple of things, and then we'll wrap it up. Oh yeah, just wanted to show you quickly what the new change log looks like. Uh, so on any anything in the, the data entry area is going to be tagged by user by date and will give you the exact change that occurred. It's a much cleaner, nicer interface. It's a, a lot easier for, the, for someone to navigate. And I think with that, maybe I'll wrap it up in the interest of time. <laughs>